A new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the U.S. claims that the massive Greenland ice sheet is on the brink of a major tipping point. The study's authors say enough ice to raise the global sea level by more than a meter is probably already doomed to melt from Greenland in the next few decades. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that a new study of the ice sheet heights and melting rates in Greenland's Jakobshan Basin shows that the Greenland ice sheet is on the brink of a major tipping point. Rising temperatures caused by the climate crisis have already seen trillions of tons of Greenland's ice pour into the ocean. Melting its ice sheet completely would eventually raise the global sea level by 7 meters. The prime suspect for this surge in melting in Greenland is a vicious circle, in which melting lowers the height of the ice sheet, exposing it to the warmer air found at lower altitudes, which causes further melting. Study co-author Niklas Boers says the findings show destabilization of this ice sheet is underway and might already have passed the tipping point. Boers said the findings suggest there will be substantially increased melting in the near future. Ice equivalent to 1 to 2 meters of sea level rise was probably already doomed to melt, though this would take centuries, and melting the whole ice sheet would take a millennium. Scientists say any large-scale melting of the Greenland ice sheet would have long-term global consequences beyond rising sea levels. It could halt the Gulf Stream ocean current, with potential knock-on effects of the Amazon rainforest and tropical monsoons. Keep watching for more videos about what scientists are finding out about Earth's past and future. The flatlands of the Siberian tundra were shaken by a violent and powerful explosion that blew out a huge crater 30 meters deep. CNN reports that this explosion last year was the 17th blowout crater to appear in Russia's remote Yamal and Gita Arctic peninsulas since the first was spotted in 2013. The new crater also offered the first opportunity for a scientist to use drones to build a 3D model of the crater. The 3D model largely confirmed what scientists had hypothesized. Methane gas builds in a cavity in the ice, causing a mound to appear at ground level. The mound grows in size before blowing out ice and other debris in an explosion, leaving behind a massive crater. What's still unclear is the source of the methane. It could be coming from layers deep within the Earth, or closer to the surface, or a combination of the two. Scientists believe that the frozen Earth of Siberia's tundra acted as a plug that kept the methane trapped. As the region warms up and the permafrost melts for the first time in recorded history, it's expected that the methane blowouts would become more frequent. 66 million years ago, a meteor hit Earth at such high intensity that it wiped out almost all life on the planet. Now, new fossils tell us more about what happened that fateful day. Here's what we know. According to a recent paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, fossils at an excavation site in North Dakota called Tanis show details of what happened moments after the deadly asteroid responsible for the extinction of dinosaurs hit Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. According to National Geographic, the impact left a giant crater measuring 50 miles, or roughly 80 kilometers wide, and 18 miles or roughly 30 kilometers deep. The collision catapulted tons of molten lava, vaporized rock, and asteroid dust at high speeds. The fallout covered the entire planet and led to the extinction of 75% of life on Earth and the end of the Cretaceous period. In the recent study, paleontologists found fossils of fish, trees, terrestrial vertebrates, and marine creatures that had been flung to Tanis in the aftermath of the asteroid impact. These revealed that roughly an hour after the asteroid hit Earth, debris from the collision turned into particles of glass that rained down for roughly 20 minutes. These particles are called tectites and were found inside the gills of fossilized fish and captured in amber from fossilized tree resin. The deposits at Tanis are a result of magnitude 10 or 11 earthquakes caused by the asteroid crash that then triggered large waves known as seiches that sloshed water, sediments, and animals into areas now known as KPG sites. Researchers believe these tsunamis reached Tanis roughly 17 hours after impact. KPG sites are part of the KPG boundary, which is a sedimentary layer that marks the end of the Cretaceous period and the beginning of the Tertiary period. According to the study's lead author Robert De Palma, these fossils are a window into the aftermath of one of the most impactful moments for life on Earth. As human beings, we descended from a lineage that literally survived in the ashes of what was once the glorious kingdom of the dinosaurs and we're the only species on the planet that has ever been capable of learning from such an event to the benefit of ourselves and every other organism in our world. Archaeologists may have unearthed evidence to confirm the biblical account of Jerusalem's destruction by the Babylonians. Haaretz reports that an international team led by the University of North Carolina at Charlotte 
has uncovered layers of ash deposits on Mount Zion, which contained artifacts such as a rare piece of jewelry and arrowheads. According to UNC Charlotte professor Shimon Gibson, this combination of artifacts indicates some kind of destruction or devastation at the site, since nobody abandons gold jewelry and nobody has arrowheads in their domestic refuse. Haaretz reports that the ash layers were dated to the Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem in 587 or 586 BCE, using pottery fragments and oil lamps typical of the period. The arrowheads were identified as Scythian, made of copper alloy and iron. They are known to have been used by Babylonian archers according to ancient origins. Haaretz reports that the discoveries support the hypothesis that Jerusalem was a sprawling and rich city when it was besieged by Babylonians, and not a small hilltop citadel like some have suggested. The UNC Charlotte team may have also found what may be a significant structure from the Iron Age. As the building lies beneath layers from different periods, it has yet to be excavated. Archaeologists say they will likely begin in 2020. Ancient remains found in a cave in the Philippines have led to the discovery of a tiny hominin species, previously unknown to science. According to an article published in Nature, researchers excavating Kalao Cave uncovered bones and teeth with a mix of ancient and modern features. The fragments came from three individuals of a previously unknown species now named Homo luzonensis, after the Philippine island of Luzon on which it was found. The size of the bones suggests its owners may have only been about three feet tall and possibly shorter than Homo floresiensis, who inhabited the Indonesian island of Flores. Both were alive and present in Eastern Asia 50,000 years ago, at the same time as the Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. According to the New York Times, the tiny hominins in Luzon and Flores may be descended from Homo erectus. Nature reports that the species is known to have moved from Africa to Southeast Asia and could have shrunk as it adapted to life on the islands. However, one toe bone discovered in the cave is curved, unlike that of a Homo erectus or Homo sapien. It is instead much more similar to that of the Australopithecus, which lived in Africa three million years ago and had curved toe bones that were good for climbing. According to CNN, more excavations are needed to answer questions about the characteristics of Homo luzonensis and how they evolved. But what's clear is that Southeast Asia was home to a much more diverse group of humans than first thought. So who knows what else archaeologists will find? Tomo to Alaska! If anyone's listening, stay safe! A melting Alaskan glacier may set off a landslide and trigger a tsunami in Prince William Sound according to a public letter by climate scientists and geologists at institutions including the University of Alaska, The Ohio State University, and the University of British Columbia. This event could happen as soon as next year and no later than 20 years from now, they say. The researchers say the Barry Glacier's retreat inland could send its scarp tumbling down the Barry Arm. A complete failure of the scarp will cause a destructive tsunami to crash down Barry Arm and Harriman Fjord, while partially endangering Port Wells. If the scarp fails completely, it would raise waves as high as 1,000 feet, which would threaten fishing boats and the hundreds of fishermen and tourists who frequent the region. Even locations far from the Barry Glacier may experience 30-foot-tall waves. According to the letter, climate change is melting Barry Glacier, and the retreating ice has left a swath of the cliff unsupported by its mass. The loose scarp then entered into a slow-motion landslide that is now showing signs of speeding up. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.